Chat. There you go. This is Chip Chat. Welcome to Chip Chat, everybody. Uh, I'm Chip. I'm out this week. Uh, he's on quote unquote vacation. So, um, no, we assigned him something. So, Eric is here uh, to fill in. Say hi, Eric. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Eric, not as good looking as Tez. But, that's true, but it's radio, but it's radio so it's fine. <laughs> uh, Eric has a fake newspaper. I do, the Tacoma Torch. Yeah, it's like a fake radio show, but on paper. Yeah, we probably have a couple more fans than you, but, it's, you know, <laughs> doing okay. That's true. Do you have only fans? Oh. Yeah, it's pretty good. Like this shirt, Eric made this shirt. Uh, <laughs> great story about that. Kind of made this hat, too. Didn't mean to. I kind of made that whole team. Yeah, to get uh, in perpetuity some some cash. Well, we uh, we've got a relationship with them now, so you know, thanks for that. Uh, anyway, so you're here, uh, but one of the reasons you're here is that we're going to talk to uh, a returning guest, uh, renowned designer Dan Formosa will be joining us, but he's not specifically here to talk about design. Although we're going to squeeze some of that out of him if we can. He's also uh, an author and kind of a famous one uh, about baseball. Do you know about baseball? I know a little bit about baseball. Your credentials are? Uh, I was a college baseball player. Yeah. And, and I you, coach high and school you baseball. And you currently coach high school baseball. I play baseball. And I wore baseball stuff today. See? Got my baseball so you're a baseball guy. guy. You could say that. Yeah. So that's why you're here. I, I hope I'm here for more than that. Well, yeah. you're also funny, which is good because <laughs> somebody on this show better be. All right. Um, we have other stuff, but we're going to talk to Dan about like all of the new rules because baseball's got a bunch of new oh, rules. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, they've got bases made out of pizza boxes, all kinds of stuff. Um, <laughs> we also are going to talk about this thing that we found out this week, which is I have something in common with Tucker Carlson, which I wouldn't have guessed, but yep. We do have something in common. We're going to talk all about that. Uh, Texas hates women and Florida still sucks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be a packed show. It's going to be a lot going on. And, ah, uh, damn it. I left. I had uh, some of the M&Ms, the show Tuckums. I had another pack a couple weeks ago. I had a pack of M&Ms to show Tuckums on the screen because he watches, um, you know, just to keep his interest. Got it. But uh, I left them in the car. So. That sucks. Sucks for Tucker. He doesn't get his green M M&M and M fix on the chip chat. <laughs> Sorry, Tuckums. Uh, all right, you got a word? I got a word. Okay. Uh, I I've got I've got a word. Let's see if this if this works. All right. Uh, so sit back, grab some fungo bats. It's pizza box time. You're listening to the best show, the only show, Chip Chat on Beltway Radio and Beyond. segment now called uh tucker and chip so right. uh, i'm excited to know what how you are the same as tucker yes how i am exactly the same as tucker carlson i mean other than your good looks yeah <laughs> and and insane laughs um okay before we talk about that the thing that everybody needs to know is that there is this lawsuit going on with dominion voting machines suing the absolute pants off of fox news and normally the men at fox news Love taking off their pants, but not to the tune of $1.6 billion. <laughs> Dominion knows because they can read that Fox News was lying about all of this stuff about them. They were defaming Dominion voting systems yeah. and putting on people who were defaming them and cost them business, cost them um, mm -hmm. growth and all of this stuff. And they've mapped it out and it cost them $1.6 billion. 
They are suing Fox News for that $1.6 billion. They are also suing Mr. Pillow individually uh, for $1.6 million. They're also su- suing Rudy and uh, Sidney Powell individually for $1.3 billion. So, you know, it's not that they were injured $7 billion. It's that each of these entities injured them $1.3 billion or one6 depending on the entity. And uh, that's a lot of money even for Fox. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know very many corporations that are worth, you know, $6 billion in the news. Is yeah. Fox well, worth that much? They're they're the highest uh, rated. They make the most money. They actually do that. Charge the most of the cable subscriber, the cable uh, companies to carry their stuff. And they actually make enough money off of the carriage fees that they wouldn't need any advertisers at all. So that's why this like boycotting their advertisers is kind of irrelevant. But anyway, the point is Fox News is is in big trouble and they're in legal uh, battle here. And right now, Dominion is asking for what they call a summary judgment. They're just going to mm-hmm. lay out the facts and say this is so beyond any uh, yeah. rebuttal here that it's just like find in our favor. It almost never happens, but that is generally when the case gets made. And so they've been filing these things because they've got all the emails and text messages from Rupert Murdoch. Uh, Tucker, Laura Ingram, Sean Hannity, Jesse Water, all of these creeps on Fox, they've got all of their communications and depositions. And it turns out these people have been lying relentlessly to their viewers and not lying in the way where like they're just saying this stuff to drive ratings. They're saying the stuff to drive ratings and then they're getting on their text to the, and their phones to each other and going, man, that was a lot of horse shit. So like they're they're writing down in a recordable format how they're lying. And we knew that, but now there's proof of that. Now it's in open court. Yeah. And so and there's so much of it that they've had to release these several hundred page filings each day for a week. They've got thousands and thousands of pages of emails of Fox people talking amongst themselves about how they are lying about the election being stolen. It's like succession. Yes, in a way. Yeah. Okay. But what we learned in this are some pretty damning things. Now, if you were listening last week, we had a similar list, but there's even more to it. Uh, Here's some things on November 19th of 2020 in an email, Rupert Murdoch appears to describe Trump and Rudy as both quote, increasingly mad. We'll give it away. The the, the ink (laughs) dripping off his head. Like, any of this man, woman, camera, person, TV, or whatever, mad. increasingly just, mad. Yeah. Pro tip, somebody with their finger on the button, increasingly mad. That's a Dr. Strange love movie. We've already seen that one. That's not how that should go. Uh, he adds that Trump of Trump quote, the real danger is what he might do as president. Apparently not sleeping and bouncing off the walls. Don't know about Melania, but kids no help. No shit. Yeah, right. So like kids. Oh, my God. I guess that means he called uh, DJ TJ and Ivanka and was like, hey, can you get your dad under control? And they're like, buddy, let me tell you, (laughs) been trying for years. No, they didn't say that. They said, yeah, we're we're, this is under control. And we're we're about to cash in. Jared got what? Two point five billion dollars from the Saudis. He should just pay off Fox's uh, lawsuit. And yeah, just walk away from it. Still have a couple hundred mil left over. Funny point about that. You might say to yourself, why on God's green earth would Fox News want to go to court about something which they know they're lying and have it all be exposed? Why would someone do that? Because if they just settle, they have to admit it all anyway. So they're going to fight it and then they're going to not cover it and hope that their viewers stay siloed enough that they never find out about it and and then pay the $1.6 billion. <laughs> I guess (laughs) they're going to lose. They're so obviously. I I can't see how they're getting out of this. No. Uh, In his deposition, Murdoch not only disputed Trump's claim that the 2020 election was stolen, but he also agreed when he was asked whether Trump was, quote, a sore loser. He was like, yeah, fucking so a loser. He's trying. Um, Other key comments come from Fox News host Tucker Carlson, who knew previously that he privately who who we knew previously that he had privately warned that 
that Trump, quote, could easily destroy us if we play it wrong. He also called him a demonic force. Um, what we didn't know was that he was speaking in the context of Trump's business ventures. He goes on to say that, like, every business Trump touches fails. And, and he says it at length. Here's, here's a quote. All of them fail. This is about his businesses. What he's good at is destroying things. He's the undisputed yeah. world champion of that. He can easily destroy us if we play it wrong. It's so obvious. Tucker wrote that. I mean, if you look at most of his business ventures, though, like Trump Stakes and Trump University, maybe he got a shot. You know, like you can't be that afraid of him. He's got the real estate things well, going he, well. Yeah, but... he can't be batting a thousand at failing. Yeah. it's it, But Tucker, that's surprisingly like that, something that... I would say. <laughs> Someone tells Tucker, quote, on the bright side, uh, Trump has a pretty low rate of success in his business ventures. And then, then he goes on to say all that stuff. Two days before January 6th, this is one of my favorite, favorite things. On, on January 4th, Tucker texted someone quote, we are very, very close to being able to ignore Trump most nights. I truly can't wait. <laughs> I like that. Most nights. Then he added, I hate him passionately. Wow. Tucker, I agree. You need a little bow tie. Yeah, right. No, he's done with the bow tie. Oh, now. He he's on to oh, the, yeah. too bad. It's, uh, it was too elitist. Yeah, that's true. Oh, you know, he, the Swanson air. He's a man of the people he's now. He's a man of the that's people. That's right. Oh. Uh, Tuck, it's a I, 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 I gotta say, uh, I can't disagree with that. I also hate Donald Trump passionately. I'm starting to think I might have a couple similarities with Tucker. You might be very similar to that Tucker. That scares me. Okay. Uh, after January 6th, Murdoch also mused about Trump's fading away. He was asking uh, former House Speaker and Fox News Corp board member now, Paul Ryan, uh, couldn't he just resign and get Pence to pardon him and then just disappear? <laughs> like, no, <laughs> that's... That would be the quid pro quo. That's exactly the thing that, no, you're not supposed to do that. Uh, later on, uh, okay, here's the other thing that happened, is that Fox News' news division called the Arizona election for Biden. And they did it first. Yeah. And then they were very sorry that they did it because they all got fired. The opinion side of Fox were talking about how the news side was ruining everything for them mm. and that they were driving this. They were telling the truth. How dare they? And uh, that it was hurting the stock price because their viewers were leaving and going to OAN where they could get the lies, you know, mains mainlined into their Absolutely, throats. Yeah. So they were, they were complaining about the news people, right? Okay. On November 16th, Tucker pointed to a, a tweet from a non-Fox reporter noting that Fox anchor Eric Sean had debunked Trump lawyer Sidney Powell's claims about Dominion uh, right after Maria Bartiromo had her on. Tucker complained that, quote, our news division people are promoting it. Later in that string, Carlson shared a Daily Beast story. He reads the Daily Beast? About Sean's debunking, and Ingram responded, Briganti, referring to Fox Executive and Communication Division, uh, Irina Briganti, she is coordinating this. And here's Tucker's response. Without question, she hates us. Irina hates primetime. Trust me, that's not speculation. And and Ingram's like, my anger at the news channel is pronounced. What? What is? <laughs> well, I don't, first of all, who talks like that? Pronounced. Yeah, my anger is pronounced. <laughs> pronounced what? Fucking angry? <laughs> What's wrong with you, lady? In the country club, you're not allowed to swear. So yeah, you have to speak like a regular when, person. When you know the waiter brings you the wrong thing. My anger is pronounced. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, but then, like, Tucker continued to tuck. So <laughs> while this stuff is being filed in court and the whole rest of the country and the world is seeing this because Fox News people are not seeing this, what they are not seeing this, haha. Ha. What they are seeing, it's a little on the nose. What they are seeing is Tucker's weird uh, video edit of January 6th, which he had 44,000 hours of footage to use that he got from Dumb Kevin. Of, that's a lot it's of It's a lot. Guess what he's, he's managed to cobble together that shows it being a peaceful, decent sightseeing trip. 
<laughs> Where they cut away to like the Adirondacks and like yeah, like well, no, of the and... of the protesters or rioters not rioting when they were resting out when they were tired when they were they were out when they were like exhausted even... from protesting and rioting. They're like, okay, this is the scene that we want. And they're just, yeah. Uh, I just broke seven windows. I need to take a break. Oh, look how peaceful they are. Yes, yes, just like that. So, in fact, one of the bits of footage that he had was of a guy picking up a podium to put it back as if this was, you know, he's being respectful of the place. Turns out that's the guy who stole that podium. <laughs> he's in jail right now. But um, he took it away peacefully. But he took it away peace. So, how many of the 44,000 hours, how many minutes, hours, seconds has. Tucker managed to cut together that makes January 6th look peaceful. So far that he has aired on television. I'm going to say about two minutes. It, you, you'd be close. It's four. Wow. He's got four minutes of it not being right, including showing the footage of Josh Hawley running like a baby uh, <laughs> and being like, no, no, no. There were other people running away too. This reminds me of, remember when the Karate Kid, years later, they came out with a video. Somebody re- did the preview yeah and made it look like daniel was the bad guy yeah right, right? this is the same kind That's of exactly it the, he should work in that field reworking scripts well it's essentially what he's doing except he's got a production team to help him with that so while uh trump is out fake tweeting about how january 6 was the greatest day of his life tucker's got actual video uh editing software and he's trying to put together something that that is a lie it's such a lie that um, Cocaine Mitch, who is currently in the hospital with a concussion, by the way, um, I'm not sure I wish that on him. So don't, I don't, I don't want credit for that. You know who did trip him though? Merrick Garland. Um, okay. It, can he just like protect himself by just like tucking into, into his the turtle shell? shell? Yeah. And just rolling a little bit. You'd think like, like maybe he's just a little too old. Didn't get in too quick. Yeah. Well, it's the polio. You know, his legs don't go <laughs> fast enough. But anyway, all right. So. Like, Tucker's weird uh, fake January 6th, like, a bunch of the Republicans who lived through it, <laughs> they they asked the reporters, they're like, so what do you think of Tucker's thing? And they're like, this is irresponsible. This is this is crazy. The chief of the Capitol Police, Chief uh, Manger, asked that his statement be read at roll call. Here are some of the, the key points of the statement that Tucker pushed, quote, outrageous and false allegations that officers acted as, quote, tour guys. Major uh, refuted that characterization, saying that officers who were severely outnumbered were using, quote, de-escalation tactics to try to talk riders into getting each other to leave the building. Uh, the program, quote, cherry-picked from the calmer moments outside the violent attack to push a false narrative dismissing the violence of the siege. Uh, Fox News host claimed... Fallen officer Brian Sicknick's death, quote, had nothing to do with his heroic actions. The department maintains, Major wrote, that had Officer Sicknick not fought valiantly for hours on the day that he was being violently assaulted, Officer Sicknick would not have died the next day. So, I mean, everybody in the Senate and the House, they were there. And as a matter of fact, it's interesting that dumb Kevin gave Tucker all of that tape. But what he's not playing is the tape of dumb Kevin on that day calling into Fox News, hoping that that's how he could get a hold of the president because yeah. he wasn't picking up his phone, saying, we are under attack. This is dangerous. People are dying. We need help. That's what the, that's the tape that, that Tucker's not playing. Yeah. So Cocaine Mitch came out and held up Chief Major's statement, and he said that everything in there was, was where he wanted to be. He said that... Uh, he, he stands with the chief. Clearly, the chief of the Capitol Police, in my view, correctly describes what most of us witnessed firsthand on January 6th. So that's my reaction to it. Um, he said that it was uh, Tucker's program was, quote, at variance with with the truth. He said, I want to associate myself entirely with the opinion of the chief of the Capitol Police about what happened on January 6th. It was a mistake, in my view, for Fox News to depict this in a way that's completely at variance with what our chief law enforcement official here at the Capitol thinks. Uh, then they caught up to Tom Tillis in North Carolina, and they're like, what do you think of this? Quote, I think it's bullshit. End quote. 
Uh, no, it goes on. I was here. I was down there, and I saw maybe a few tourists, a few people who got caught up in things, he added. But when you see police barricades breached, when you see police officers assaulted, all of that, if you were just a tourist, you should have probably lined up at the visitor center and came in in, in an orderly basis. Uh, okay, hold on. You should have lined up at the visitor center. First of all, the building was closed. Yeah. There was no visitor center hours at that time. That's great. Right? That's true. Yeah. Uh, it was not open for tour groups uh, to be in that building at that time was illegal. Yeah, basically. And everybody knew that. Yeah. So I don't understand this. Well, you know, the visitor center, blah, blah, blah. Their, their argument would be Brian, something happened. Uh Oh, we're, we're on the, uh, the other feed. If you're looking here, let's just make sure the sound turns on, on this feed. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, so just turn the microphone on here. We're still on. We're not still on. Okay, well, I don't know. Can anybody hear us? Can you hear us? Man, this yeah. show's gone downhill since COVID. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um. Okay. Well, we can just continue with that anyway. Uh, Republican Senator Kevin Kramer, North Dakota, said uh, he was on Capitol Hill uh, in the Capitol on January six. Firmly rejected Tucker's portrayal of that day as quote some rowdy peaceful protest of Boy Scouts. Uh, I think that breaking down, a <laughs> breaking through glass windows and doors to get into the United States Capitol against the borders of police is a crime. I think particularly when you come into the chambers, when you start opening the members' desks, when you stand up in their balcony to somehow put that in the same category as, you know, permitted peaceful protest is just a lie. What kind of badge as a Boy Scout do you win for bringing zip ties it's to the Capitol? It's your riot badge, of course. You get yeah. yeah, you get a little riot badge. What, what would that symbol look like? It would, oh, that's probably a good question. Probably some, like, zip ties and, like, you know, some tactical gear. Yeah, uh, it would be the the little Proud Boy emblem with their oh, little proud, PB. Oh, the proud yeah, they get a Proud Boy badge. Yeah. Where they're not allowed to jack off unless they're within three feet of a woman, which is a true <laughs> thing about the Proud Boys. I Look, I don't write their how, rules. How do you know that? Uh, because they had to file that in court, actually, <laughs> uh, because they are being... Uh, sued and now they're trying to subpoena Trump to come in to their defense uh, and say, "Look, we were just following his orders, and uh, we want him to come into court and say so." Guess what? He's not going to do. But all of that is true. This is the most ridiculous, like silly, but also dangerously violent thing. I'm a guy who writes satire, and I can't tell what satire anymore. That's it's all true. Anyway, it's a good uh, it's a good story. Why don't we take a break? We'll get and our electric. Well, uh, yeah, we'll get our thoughts the together. Tubes working correctly here. Yeah, we'll get the series of tubes going on, and then uh, we'll briefly get a, a chance to talk about Montana. It's one of those square-shaped states. Oh yeah. Um, and then uh, then we'll have a little bit more news in the rundown. Then we're going to talk to Dan, who's going to teach us about, about baseball. It's going to be talk really some cool. baseball. Yeah. So uh, you're listening to Chip Chat on Beltway Radio and Beyond. Street balls. At first it was chance why Christian mail and on those who made the
right, welcome back to Chip Chat here on Beltway Radio and Beyond. I'm your host, Chip. With me tonight is Eric. Eric had a costume change. Yeah, I got hot in here. It's like it's like that Nelly song. Maybe it's you. It's my it's my only fans. Radiate heat. Well, Well, stuffing them with the backdoor slider. (laughs) We'll get you there. Classic line. It is classic. How much did you raise with the shirts, by the way? We raised about twelve hundred and fifty bucks. That's nice. About we raised exactly that much. That's that's and, right. well. You got some, some of them smiling. And some only boys and girls club uh, kids are now able to afford to play sports. That's fantastic. Yeah, he did a good thing. All over a bunch of dick jokes. Yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> Shout out to Tony and the Crop Dusters, by the way. Favorite the uh, fake baseball team. No, they're not fake. They're a real team. Uh, okay. Now we've come to the part of the show that's called The Rundown. This is where I tell you about some stuff that's gone on in the news. There you go. In case Tez is listening. Um, Dateline, Montana. Congressman Matt Rosendale, a Republican who represents a wide swath of Montana. Pause. That entire sentence is (laughs) self-evident. This does not need to be there. Uh, There are no small swaths of (laughs) Montana. It is literally called the Big Sky State. I watch Yellowstone. I know what's up. It's huge. Uh, He's coming under fire for uh, being in a photo with with who, Eric? Uh, A group of white nationalists, of course. Yes, of course. Uh, His office denies the meeting which is funny because there's a photo of it. Um, the photo appeared on Friday on a Telegram account controlled by prominent white nationalist Grayson Arnold and shows four other men standing by Rose Rosendale. The group includes another well-known, and this is going to be a, get ready for this sentence. You hear it? It's coming. The group includes another well-known white supremacist, Ryan Sanchez. Sanchez. The other two men oh standing with Rosendale could not be immediately identified. Okay. So, so my maiden name, I look white. I yes. am white. But my grandfather's Hernandez. Yeah. So on behalf of white people with Mexican last names, yes. this is shameful. It is very shameful. <laughs> now, it is possible that he is Sanchez of Spain. True. And could come to it that way. But that's still, I think, generally speaking, in the, the white it's supremacist Hispanic world adjacent, you know, yeah no they're they're the Hispanic. it is Hispanic. they're the I'm southern saying. europeans yeah they're yeah, the yeah. those those olive toned yeah, you know natives before they moved to before south they, america right yeah they were already dark that's that's the like white nationalist thing um okay so that's bad he got caught in this photo it's certainly not good and then uh there's it turns out that there was uh a bunch of these other guys here Arnold, one of the guys that was in the photo, also uh, was also employed briefly by the Washington State GOP. The Daily Beast confirmed that Arnold had been part of the party's payroll, but was terminated after the Republicans learned of his involvement in far-right politics, which included advocating for shooting refugees, killing undocumented immigrants, and saying that Hitler was, quote, a complicated historical figure which many people misunderstand. Oh my God. No, no, we don't. Um it isn't the first time he's been photographed with a high-profile politician, though. He managed to get in with Kelly Ward of the of Arizona and a, a few others. There's also, like, uh, that guy, what you call him, Fuentes, who was hanging out with Kanye and Trump. So, like, these guys are able to get meetings with all these people. You can't – I can't get meetings with these guys. Yeah, and my other question, too, is, like – these people who, you know, like, for example, these Congress people who are like, oh, I don't, I don't know who they are. I don't I, I want to stay away from these people. But then they're like, why are you attracting those people in the first place? Yeah, that's really the question, because these guys aren't going and trying to take a photo with, say, Jamie Raskin. No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> because they they fear Jamie Raskin because he's Jewish. But like they. Yeah. Why are they able to get close to them? That's the real question. I understand the congressman will basically take a picture with sure. and shake hands with anybody, but their staff has to let them get close. That's why you hire a really good staff and yeah. know who these people are. Well, they do, and they know who these people are, and yeah. they support what these people do, and that's why they're in all these photos. You don't see it going the other way. Yeah, well, you know, Rosendale also, like, he voted for eliminating citizens by birthright. Right. He voted against Juneteenth as a federal holiday. Yeah. He's against the Medal of Honor for... You know, Capitol Police officers killed in January 6th. So I, I wonder you know, why. A- and he wonders why he's attracting these kind of people. Right. I mean, come on. It's obvious. It's right. Okay. Uh, Dateline. 
the North Sea. No, Baltic Sea. Baltic Sea. It's all the same. Um, yeah, sure. It's one of those cold bits of the ocean. There's a pipeline under there, the Nord Stream pipelines. These are the pipelines that carry gas from Russia to Europe. The kickoff of the war in Ukraine, these pipelines got super famous. Everybody wanted to talk about it. And then one of them blew up. Boom. Kind of. Had a leak. But it made a big, like, bubble in the ocean, and it lost lots of gas, and everybody was, like, pretty worried about it. It's like in... in pool when you fart in the pool. yeah it's exactly Boop. like when you fart in the pool yeah. except and it's made of the same stuff yeah. but it was just a lot of it and so everybody's like oh well it's clearly like a an attack by the russians they've got submarines uh they're in that area all the time they blew up the gas so that europe would like cave and stop supporting ukraine which is not what happened they basically patched the the gas kept buying gas from russia but told Russia they didn't want to pay as much for it. And so, you know, it's working. And uh, <laughs> now they're doing their best. <laughs> We're sending them gas in ships. But they that's not what happened, apparently. What happened? U.S. intelligence agencies report that it might have been some Ukrainian sympathizers who blew up the pipeline. Ooh. It's not good because we really didn't need that. Allow me to put on my, let me put on my conspiracy theory hat. Yes. Turn my hat, rally cap slash conspiracy. All right. You know what this is? This what is, is it? Tacoma Park. Okay. It's all related to Tacoma Park. I'm, I'm sure it is. They're against gas appliances. That's true. Yeah. And, you know, despite trying the fact to, that they all have them and, in their houses. And, you know, now Joe Biden wants to take away your I gas stove. Take away your gas stoves. So this is Hunter Biden, somewhere on his laptop, you're going to find some information about Burisma about blowing up a gas line. Stopping the gas lines from going into Europe. Yeah. To so that they can make you have an electric stove. You got it. You oh, great. Makes perfect sense now. Q I get on. it. Q yeah. On or yeah, yeah. We need a new anon, like a new. We should get our like, own letter. Yeah. What what letter should we get? I don't um, know. C. It's chip chat. We can be like CNN. Chip anon. Sounds like CNN. CNN. Yeah. CNN. CNN. Like there it. you go. It's real news. According to CNN. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. According to C. <laughs> you could be like uh, another animal for Wolf Blitzer. You could be like. Pug Blitzer or something. Yeah, it's funny, like right? He, very close to a wolf, a pug and a, and a wolf, yeah, it's, right? It's like a so, smaller wolf. Pug Blitzer over here on on CNN. I've got the beard. <laughs> we look we look pretty similar. Right, I'm gonna put my normal hat back on. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's what happened. It's not good. It's a, it's a oof story, um, but yeah. it, you know it's worth it's worth covering. The other breaking news tonight that broke literally as we were getting here to the studio is that. There are reports by the New York Times and some other outlets that the district attorney in Manhattan is about to indict the former guy himself on the Stormy Daniels payment issue, which is not like a negotiable thing. There's no argument of like activity. He's proudly claiming he did it. So it's not that he's saying I didn't do that. He's saying that I did it and it's legal but it's not legal and the lawyers can read. So like <laughs> it's, so. they're just going to be like, look, it says right here, don't fucking do that with campaign money. And he's going to be like, I did it with campaign money. So it must be okay. And they can be like, no idiot. It says right here, you're not to do that. And he's going to be like, well, I don't care. And they're going to be like, get in the jail. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just going to be it. Like it's no argument there. So that's the other breaking and news. Stormy night. Yeah. Dark and stormy Daniels. She's not so dark though. She's blonde. She's very white. Yeah. She's well, you know, Trump would That's why Trump likes of her. Of course, yeah. yeah. $130,000 likes her. Uh okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we are going to talk baseball with probably the most expert baseball person I know, present company excluded, and uh we will have a really good time doing nerdy baseball things. You're listening to Chip Chat on Beltway Radio and Beyond. Sweeps. Do what you need to do. And half-funk, so it was like you can hear when they 
tonight is eric how's it going uh and now we've come to the thing that people are actually tuning in for <clears throat> dan formosa is a world-renowned designer and star of my favorite videos on youtube of, except except of course our videos which are on youtube go check it out beltway radio and beyond channel um but he's also a well-known author about baseball uh publishing the baseball field guide originally all the way back in 2006 and publishing several new editions and revisions as the rules have been revised. This year will show us a wide variety of changes, which we are already seeing in the preseason games. So we have invited Dan back to tell us about the new rules. Dan, welcome back to Chip Chat. Chip, I am happy to be here. Eric, Eric, great to meet you. Yeah, you too. I'm excited to be here. So Yeah, because, wait, because Eric's wearing a San Francisco hat. Yes. All oh, right. I can't get this on. Wait. Let me figure this out. Who designed these headphones? There we go. There he goes. He's got his Yankees hat on. All right. Now I feel like we're we're a baseball group here. Yeah. Now I feel I feel like I'm in. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm I'm minor league, but I could have been wearing my Orioles gear and still been minor league. Oh, you know, minor league is real baseball. <laughs> oh, come on. We can make our own jokes. I don't like it when the <laughs> other guys do it. All right. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, um. Before we get too far into the, you sent us some some pictures that you're going to use when you describe the new rules. I think so. We'll we'll get those up when we do it. But before we get to that, do do you get advanced since you write the the rule book that the people use? Do you get like advanced warning of of what the new rules are going to be so that you can get like the new editions out on time? No, not this round. And I got to tell you, I think it's because uh, Major League Baseball must have been in a whole lot of chaos with these new rules. Yeah, because they were still in contention uh, throughout the year and they never actually even published their 2022 rules until very, very, very late in the season. Oh, wow. So we couldn't I, even like like pin down what they officially called for 2022 and um, what they were going to be calling for 2023 was still, you know, you needed a, a, a psychic to uh, figure <laughs> out what they were going to actually uh, pin down. So if they hadn't published a rule book, how did people know like what to do? They had like a draft or something, you know, trying to get a draft of what the teams were using or what the umpires were using. Uh, it turns out that in their official rules, when they finally published it, there were not a whole lot of changes. There were two tiny changes. So they were really going by the 2021 rules. So they didn't have to like learn anything new, but this year there's big changes. Yeah. Major changes. Yeah. Big and, changes. You know, the bottom line is that, um, like speaking of psychics, I think someone at Major League Baseball like looked into the future and said, everyone's watching TikTok. 
Yeah. And, and baseball takes a long time. And well, so they decided to introduce their own TikTok. It's the pitch clock. It goes TikTok, 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 and then you have, you know, take take the pitch or you're out. Yeah. Not just that, but there's a whole succession of uh, of new rules that are meant to speed up the game and also to get more action on the field, like the uh, pizza box bases. Right. Okay. So let's let's talk about uh, the new rules. Uh, you're going to tell us what the new rules are that you know about and you've got some you know graphics for and all that. And then we have a set of new rules that we want to propose and we want to run by you and see if you think that these are any good. These are solid, by the way. Yeah, they're really we got it. We, we sat. We've talked. Yeah, we spent an hour on the phone writing maybe these Maybe 55 rules. minutes. And it was and great. mastered baseball. Yeah. We All right. I'm He's looking forward to getting to them. All right. So go ahead, Dan. What are the new rules that people need to understand uh, before this new season, which I, I think opening day is what, the 30th, right? Yeah, it's March yeah. 30th. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And every, every, every team is going to be playing on the 30th. Right. So no odd number teams. Let's start, you know, I don't really have a specific sequence, but let's start with the bases, bigger bases. So the bases are going from, which means first, second, and third base is going from 15 inches on a side to 18 inches on a side. So they're huge. They're huger. Yeah, they're huge. And what is the rationale here? Uh, more hits, they think, uh, more, more, more base. Yeah, more people on base. They think it's going to increase uh, by roughly 2%, which doesn't sound like a whole lot. But they are trying anything they can to increase the on-field action. They want they want people up there. Henderson is really pissed Yeah, off. I was going to say, like, this also has to do with stolen bases, right? That they want people to be safe more often if, when they try to steal? Yeah, there's a thought there that it's going to be safer if they're a little bit bigger. But I'm not sure yeah. that that's their driving force. Um, what that means is that because of the way the bases are positioned on the field, uh, that 18 inches puts uh, first and second and second and third, four and a half inches closer. Yeah. So instead of it's not 90 feet, it's like a little less than 90 feet or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's uh, that's a little different. But, you know, baseball is such a game of seconds or split seconds or, you know, replays and what's his foot on before the ball, et cetera. So right. it's, it's, it's going to it's going to make a difference. It's going to make it more exciting, I think. I mean, there's more chances to be safe. Like, you know, is he safe? Yeah, he's safe. He, his finger is on or whatever. But it also means that when uh, managers get mad and go and pick up the bases and throw them around, they now have to pick up much bigger bases. Yeah, there could be more injuries. The injuries you save from a runner being yeah are going to be gonna made up for. Yeah, yeah, yeah from getting back spasms of managers. Yeah, Huck getting feet. whacked in the head with a base. Yeah. yeah. It's an effective weapon next time you get beamed. <laughs> <laughs> Take your base, literally. All right. <laughs> what what else you got uh, on the list there, Dan? Well, you know, uh, you know, speaking about more action, you know, since um, batting averages have gone down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, significantly. So that's also what they're trying to increase. They want to increase batting averages. So there is a uh, pitch clock. And this is because the pitchers are too good. That's why batting averages are going down. Or yeah, exactly. Pitchers are getting better than the batters. <laughs> yeah, the ratio of improvement of pitcher to batter is in the pitcher's favor, apparently. So yeah, if you look at that chart on the bottom right, the batting averages uh, since 1950 have been going down, and the strikeout rates have been going up, and you know that leads to uh, the strikeout rates have gone up significantly. Uh, it's it happened in 1968. Yeah. The war, Vietnam. Did you know, affected by that. You know something else. I, I didn't send you guys a graphic, but uh, strike zones have changed. Yeah. Ah. Well, yeah. have they officially changed, or have they just sort of in in enforcement changed? It's uh, they officially changed at significant time periods, but there also is that interpretation of right. you know what qualifies as the back of your knees when you're wearing pants. You know? <laughs> where is the letter high strike is the letter high strike really a yeah. strike you know yeah and you know the, the official designation is for the upper level is the midpoint of the body <laughs> how know? is that determined i mean yeah. you have to fold every batter in half and like mark it with a sharpie yeah and of course <laughs> yeah 
and any batter can change the batting, uh, uh, you know, the batting zone, the strike zone by by crouching. Right. Yeah, you know, standing, standing up straight crouching because it's based on the batter's body. At least the height, you know, upper and lower limits are based well, on like, the batter's body. Yeah. So your choices are stand up taller, crouch, or be Jose Altuve. Yeah. Exactly. Those are the three kinds of strike <laughs> zones there are. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So with the the pitch clock, though, it, it's like a shot clock in, in basketball, essentially, that both the pitcher and the hitter have some responsibility to either be in position or deliver by some period of time, right? Yeah, so two things are happening. The pitchers have to pitch within 15 seconds. Um, it's 20 seconds if they're runners on base. Okay. But in either case, they have a time limit, and there's a big clock on the field to remind them. And then the batters have to be in position within eight seconds, uh, you know, of the countdown. With eight seconds left. Yeah, eight seconds left. Yeah. So this would eliminate like Andy Pettit throwing the first sixteen hundred times or whatever, or is that a different rule? Yeah, no, that's limited too. Uh, he can step off the uh, the plate uh, up to three times, but the third time has to mean something. Meaning third the time third time he's got to get that out. Is that th three times per batter or three times per? Three times per batter. Okay. So yeah. the pitcher can step off off the rubber three times per batter, uh, but on the third one, he's got to either throw it or, or like, balk or what? Like Yeah, what yeah, it's that a balk. Means something. It's a balk after yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, it's a balk. But he's got, but, you know, the, the, you know, the goal is he's got to get uh, someone out that third throw. If a new bat, if someone gets on base, so if there's a new batter coming in, then that count starts over. Do you like this 15 second rule? Yeah. Where do they get the 15 seconds? They think that uh, that's going to contribute to chopping 20 to 30 minutes off of the game. And that's significant. You know, a game goes for like three hours. So if you could take uh, up to a half hour off the game, that's significant. And well, it does mean more action from like, how do they determine that was the right number? So they test these things in the minor leagues. Okay. I've got an idea. I know oh, we're no. jumping ahead. Yeah. Hear me out. 14 second. Oh, Whoa. revolutionary. Whoa. Like six minute abs. Yeah, right. <laughs> 14 six. second pitch clock. Yeah. We'll get another four minutes off the game. That's a fantastic idea. Jeez. Commissioner should be listening to the show. A smart guy. Um, all right. So the pitch clock is there. The limited on throws over to, to first. And it's the, I love that rule because I hate the throw. You're never getting anybody out with that. This is a dumb thing that pitchers do, and it's just them being nervous or twitchy or showing off or what. Like, why? What's the ratio of success for throwing over? It's got to be nothing. But I'll, I'll tell you something I, I don't like, um, and this is this rule goes back a couple of years when you can call a walk. Okay. Oh, well, you don't have to throw all four pitches. You don't have to throw all four pitches, and I just thought that was a lovely little classic ceremony. Of the catcher get crouching down. He's got to be the catcher's got to be in position, and then he's got to pop himself up and you know stick his arm way out and yeah, catch that very obvious ball. I just I just thought that was a nice little ceremonial thing, like a classic yeah. baseball thing. That rule was great in little league when you can't play catch, and so right. there was a chance for an error when that happened. Right, that was exciting. <laughs> but in the pros, it's like you know, I. It's very rare that ball gets thrown away. I'm sorry, like intentional walks in general, you know, that rule change actually really made a difference too because you got this lefty righty thing. Is there now a new rule about how many times you can switch back and forth in the batter's box because of that that weird incident that went on for like an hour and a half? Uh, you mean any one batter? Well, there was a pitcher who could pitch uh, an ambidextrous pitcher and yeah, a switch and hitter. against the switch hitter, and they kept switching sides. And it, it just went on for forever. Oh, yeah. That goes back a couple of years. You've got to decide. You so got you, to pick a side. So if you step in as a righty, you're a righty for that whole at bat. I think the pitcher yeah. goes first, right? The pitcher has to say, what yeah, there's a rule first. about that. Yes. So, and it used to be the reverse, but now it's the uh, pitcher starts. So yeah, the pitcher has to declare which hand he's going to throw it. Yeah, and the batter, it's very funny. So the batter will stand next to, but not inside of the batter's box. And the pitcher's like, oh, he's going to go up right handed. I'll go righty. And yeah. Then the, and the batter goes psych. And he switches over to the other box, but then it's sort of locked in. And once you take that first swing or once that first pitch happens, yeah. you're locked in. 
for both. That's pretty. I mean, how many ambidextrous pitchers are there? I know there was the one that, that caused. There's the rule. a young kid right now. Um, can't remember what school he plays for. There's 98 With right-handed both and 92, Jesus. 93 lefty. He's a stud. Who's making these weird six fingered mitts? They, they, they exist. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Double I've seen mitts. them. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Uh, that's is, who's got the contract. I couldn't on that. even throw 90 with one arm. Yeah. Like, let alone two arms. Can't throw 90 with a pitching machine. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> so pitch clock, limited throws. Uh, we've got the, the giant bases. What else is new this year, Dan? Defensive shifts. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So that's a big deal. So previously the infield can basically go anywhere they want. As a matter of fact, in the official rules of baseball, um, up until this year, there was no requirement for any of the fielders to be in any specific positions. Really? Well, the pitcher, of course, needs to be on the mound, and the catcher right. needs to be in the catcher's box. But of the rest of the team, they could stand anywhere. So where they stood, you know, left field, right field, you know, center field, um, was all a matter of... I don't want to say convention. I mean, it made sense in terms of, of, you know, field of playing in the field, you know, covering the field, but that was not, that was not a, uh, that was not a rule. So you're telling me that the answer to who's on second might've been yes. (laughs) I don't know. Could have been on second. Could have been (laughs) tomorrow. I don't know. Tomorrow. No, he's pitching. You know where he is. Yeah. Tomorrow's pitching. Today's Today's catching. catching. Right. And we don't know who's in right. No, no. Who's on first. But maybe not. He might be anywhere. Who could be fielding a bunt near home? Who could be shortstop? Who? Yes. Sometimes his wife picks him up. All right. Anyway, somebody else did that radio bit a while ago. So the new rule says you can't you you can't stand anywhere you want or what? Well, the outfield is still open to uh, where they want to stand. That makes uh, sense. Although they can't switch sides. So now the center fielder, depending on the batter, right? If a batter comes up, uh, the center fielder can't switch sides with the left fielder, for instance. Okay. So that switch cannot uh, take place. However, they can't come in or go out as far as they want, and they can shift around in the outfield. But in the infield, that's really where the defensive shift comes in. Right. Uh, you know, previously, they can get everybody on one side. If somebody hits to the left, they get the whole infield to the left. Uh, what's happening now is um, is they need to split up, right? So the um, you know third baseman and shortstop need to be on the left side of second base, and the uh, second baseman and first baseman need to be on the right side. They need to be standing in the dirt. They can't be uh, on the grass at all. At the start of the pitch, they have to be in the dirt. Okay. Um, yeah, what about, what about like the, re- too? the release of the pitch or when the pitcher starts moving? Uh, the release of the pitch. Oh, Cause I was going to say if the pitcher had a really slow motion on purpose right. and let those runners just run over quick to their spot shift. Is the same, does the same rule apply to like cheating up on a bunt though? Like, do you have to be on the dirt uh, until they pitch uh, yeah. in that direction? Yeah. There's no differentiation. Okay. So, but what about the those weird uh, fields with the AstroTurf that only has the dirt around the bases and not, like, in between them? You know what I'm talking about? Like, in the Sky Dome oh, yeah, or whatever? Right. I mean, Where's the must, dirt? Maybe they draw, like, a, a white line. They do time. have it drawn, but, like, the shortstop in Toronto, I'm sure, I'm sure their field doesn't look like this anymore, but, like, the shortstop in Toronto would not be standing in dirt. Yeah. He's He'd be standing on the green, on the green area, AstroTurf yeah. and then just dirt around the bases. How would that rule be applied? Well, one thing about baseball that's interesting is the infields are all consistent, but the outfields are all different. Right, but the infields aren't all consistent with those old AstroTurf uh, things, right? Are they going to paint like an arc to represent the dirt line? Well, it's painted, but there's not dirt there. Correct. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, like, how it, it depends how the rule is written, maybe. In front of the line. Yeah, you know, they're also, with every, with every uh, stadium, there are ground rules. Right. So there's ground rules that says this is dirt, despite the fact that it's clear. Yeah, I'm going to check into that. That's a really good question. I'm going to check into you that. Have home rules, like when you're playing beer pong and like the home. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Everybody's got their own rules. Like, like no oh, swatting. You're you're in Toronto, so you know we we have two strikes. You're out here. You know. Well, it's Canada. No, no, you get the base regardless. They're just yeah. very sorry about it. <laughs> sorry. Eh? Okay. Uh, so the shift is fixed. 
No more shifty shift. Uh, no more uh, thrown over to first for days on end. Uh, and hurry up and pitch and giant pizza box bases. Yeah, yeah. And that cub is the, the that cub is the most important. I mean, there's a lot of rules about the rosters and things like that. Yeah, rosters actually are not in the um, in the rules. That's a whole different uh, agreement that the players have with with ML, with like Major League Baseball. And stuff, yeah. yeah. Um, the one other thing that's 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 coming into play uh, are uh, the pitch com, the transmitter, yes. so that there's not as much cheating going on with stealing signs. Well, the transmitter has been in for a couple of years now, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it does, it's, it's getting like widespread. Not everybody uses it, right? Some, some people don't want to use it still. Yeah, correct. Not everyone is using it, but I don't know. That may change this year. I got to see what the teams decide to do. How long uh, until the, the trash throws uh, go over there to Johnson space center and get some of those NASA nerds to teach them how to hack this thing. Yeah, well, you see them on there like, you know, iPads. Like right. Hacking into the pitch com. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the other thing is that the pitcher and the catcher are not the only ones who may have the pitch com. It could be the uh, the second baseman, shortstop, and center fielder. They're also you know? a lot. So can there be multiple pitch coms? Like the catcher is sending a signal to more than just the pitcher. Yeah, yeah up to five players can have it. And those Ooh. those are the other three. So yeah, as a player, pitcher, like catcher. As a player myself, I like to see what the pitch is being called so I can shift myself a little bit. Right. Yeah, yeah. Play. So, yeah, I was going to say, like, there should be some opportunity for other players to see what the pitch is going to be. Well, if it's, yeah. so can the right fielder get it or no? No. You're going to see that sign anyway as a right fielder. No, but he's going to need to know because if, you, if you're throwing a breaking ball to a righty, all of a sudden it's going to come to him where it wouldn't have if you're throwing a fastball to the but right. He wants to know. You wouldn't see that sign from right. No, you wouldn't see. It. I'm saying he, the right fielder, oh. wants to know what pitch the pitcher's That's about the to throw. Goes, hey, go over there. <laughs> right, he, he's going to have to see it. <laughs> it's coming your way. All right. Um, now, Dan, we have a list of rules that we want to throw at you. Good. And your job is to tell us whether these are great or even better than great. Okay. So those are my two choices. Those are your two choices. These okay. are fantastic or awesome. No, okay. You, Tell us when they're not uh, as well. All right. I'm going to go first. So the the first uh, one we're proposing is the one-man shift. You can shift one guy left or right of uh, second base. Wherever he wants to go. One yeah. He's player a, he, can go wherever Literally he wants a to go. utility infielder. I he don't know. Gets anywhere. to play anywhere. That's right. Well, that was, 20, that was 2022. That was already the rule? But just well, one, there was no rule. Just one. just one. You can't put two guys on the, on both sides. You can't shift two guys. You can only shift one guy. Yeah. But previously, there were no limitations. Right. But now that there's a limitation, we want to add. We want to. Re- you want re- to specify. Relax it by so, saying you can shift one guy. We're, we're awesome. Centrists. We believe in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> right. believe in compromise. So, you know, instead of no shift versus unlimited shift, let's just have one guy. Go wherever he wants. The shiftiest guy on your team. Yeah. Awesome. What do you awesome. think? It's awesome. He likes it. Yeah. You know, a player cannot stand in the uh between the pitcher and the catcher. Oh, yeah. No, you can't stand yeah. there. Well, that's crazy. That's you're gonna get hurt. Yeah. I mean, I'm just on. saying it's a rule. Can you well, right, yeah. That's uh, a good rule. But you also can't like uh shift up to squeeze the bunt or whatever, because that's the grass rule. That's what we learned today. Much smarter. Uh, okay. Uh, the second rule we have, this one is called chug and chug. If you reach first on an error, you have to chug a beer because you didn't really earn that base. Yeah, that base was given to you by yeah. someone else's error. So you have to chug a beer to put you like in, in penalty for that. Any downside to, to that? To even it out. I would go for that if it was like a pint glass, not a bottle yeah. or a can. No, no, it's got to be a yeah, like a draft, like, like right, a, yeah, draft a draft. Yeah, at draft seven percent, right? Oh, seven yeah. percent. I was gonna say like six, but yeah, seven. That yeah, sounds right. Something high. And from yeah. that point on, they've got to run with it. Correct. Yeah, that's oh, right. They can't what, spill either. Oh, a spill means you have to freeze where you're at. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Rules. Awesome, awesome, awesome. There you go. All right, all right, Eric. Go ahead, right, give him one. This one is is very near. I came up with this is a serious rule. This is we're having fun <laughs> here, but now it's time to get real. Okay. The goal is to reduce time, right? Right. Games take forever. 
I love baseball. I'll watch this, you know, if it's 15 to 20 seconds per pitch, 25. I don't really care about that. But I do care about the warm-up pitches for the middle inning reliever. So when you start an inning, you get five pitches to warm up or so. It allows the defense to kind of throw the ball around the infield, get loose. But that middle inning reliever comes in, and it's like five minutes of warming up, doing his whole ceremonial run from center field, bullpen, playing music. It's fun and all, but it takes a long time. He's got to like dig around in the dirt and play with the mound and so, all that stuff. So I call this real insta hot. Yeah. You're already warmed up. You're in that bullpen, baby. Yeah. You're, you're, you've been throwing 35 pitches to a catcher for probably three innings now. And when you go out there, it should be live first pitch. Yeah. What do you think about that? No warm ups. I like that one. You know, so one of the reasons that if we're talking about watching a game live, one of the reasons that seems to go on forever is because there's a commercial going on. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so anything we can do to reduce the opportunity for TV to insert itself in the game is good. And, yep. and like, you know, every other sport, you don't get, like, those warm You don't, like, you know, the horn blows and you check in from, from you know, center court and all of a sudden you're like, all right, no, 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 let me get a couple of shots before we, we get playing. Like, no, you're you're in. No, I mean, you know, the whole point is, like, you know. Brian has thoughts, too. People want to get rid of that sort of – Oh, you have to face so many batters and you have I, pitch as many pitchers as you want. Maybe even add a little rule to this saying when you call a new pitcher, the moment you tap your right arm or left arm, you got 90 seconds to throw that you next pitch. <laughs> you better run your ass from center field. Forget Puffin that music Puffin. playing and all that. Or, you know, put on the glasses. Right. You don't talk about major Puffin league. Right, baby. Get out there and just start, start throwing 99. Yeah, you know, another change in there is less switching of pitches. Yeah, right. There's a limit to how many pitchers you yeah. can, you can I think, change out per inning. Let's keep baseball exactly as it is and just do that rule. Just make it faster. <laughs> you have to run much faster. Yeah. All right, Brian, what do you think? Brian, our producer, has has thoughts too. For well, speaking of television, you know, um, recently I've done I'm doing right now collegiate baseball and softball, and they're going in hot. Pretty much, it's like look. Fuck, you know, commercials and all that stuff. You know, by the time we're done with a commercial, I'm getting a countdown. You know, 10, 9. They're already on the, like, on five. Yeah, they're playing. The second pitch. Not I love it. The second Despite one. the commercials. Yeah. So, yeah. so really, it's like baseball is just like, who cares about the commercials? Just keep it. We're just yeah, going where we're going. That's the way, a, like, NASCAR works, for example. Yeah. They cut away to commercial and then they rejoin, you know, like, whatever. I mean, if you're taking 30 minutes out of a game, you're already cutting some commercials. Yeah, probably nothing happened during that time anyway, if, if that's the whole problem. So then just like rejoin, you know, now already in progress, like whatever. What do you think about that, Dan? I'm good with that. Yeah. All right. right. I, yeah. Well, I got to tell you, you guys, you guys are awesome, awesome, awesome. You're, you're like, you know, there, right down the line. Yeah. I need to ask, did you guys talk about start time? Oh, well, like the 705? 705. What's yeah. wrong with the 705? <laughs> no, 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 no. 705 regular season, I'm fine with. Yeah. Oh, these like 830 playoff. playoff time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, a good these, one. Well, but now that they had the wild card, they did some of them like three o'clock in the afternoon that's or whatever. Fine. But that's you, fine. But these 830 the start yeah. playoff yeah. games, yeah. no, we can't stay up for that shit. No. Yeah, on a school night. And, I, you, and you know why? I it's agree. because they're they're valuing people on the West Coast, and that's wrong because they chose to move there. The real things happen here on the East Coast first, and you left coast people are, are just going to have to watch it on tape delay like you used to or just be late and just deal with it. Man, I, loved, quick to happen. I lived in California until I was 24, and it's just like and I worked a little bit for a couple of years before I moved here. Five o'clock, we got out of work. And baseball's already on. We drove our ass home quick to get to that yeah. to watch that game. Yeah, because it was already on. Because the regular people in the rest of the country were busy baseball while you were off doing whatever they do in California. It's the wrong time zone. It's your fault. Well, we have to surf. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Um, the next uh, idea we have here, Dan. This one is called lightning round. You know, there's already the pitch clock. Where the new rule would say that that. One team, you know, the once per inning, a team can call a super speed round and and cut the pitch clock in half uh, for one batter. <laughs> Just for one, one guy. <laughs> Just for one guy. Yeah. For the whole uh, inning for that team. 
Yeah, right? they get no for they they call it yeah they call the speed round for that inning. So like it's not just the one batter. It's like all right, third inning, lightning round. The whole third inning for well the bottom of the third or whatever. yeah whoever yeah, the yeah. the defending team or the the hitting team I should say gets to call yeah speed yeah. round. You know so, they've been no pitching rounds. they've been pitching their whole lives. Why do they need a few more seconds? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Why do the, what, you know what's what's like another six seconds going to give them? I mean, they've been doing this their whole life. Time. You know, they yeah. need they need that time to adjust your cup and all that stuff. And as a hitter, you know, you swing. I don't need four seconds to be ready again. I missed. Okay, I'm ready. I mean, you I've got my up, fidget right? down. It's you know, it, I think it's a good two to three seconds. Yeah, of like. You That's know, a good rule. Pump the, and how do you how do you pick the which inning? Oh, is it the, always the third? Is it? Oh, uh, it's up to the it's up to the team. The coach, so, it's like a challenge. The coach yeah, comes it's out like, like a challenge. challenge. This inning, it's on. <laughs> yeah, he hits the button. <laughs> maybe, does he have a flag he throws? Yeah, so like a bell. Then he rings. <laughs> there you go. I think, I think you should like. Yeah, let me get a piece of tissue. Throw a flag on the field. Yeah, and that's the inning. That's the inning that it's going to yeah. be speed round. It's lightning round. All right. Do it. Okay, that well, was awesome. Number five, I think. Maybe number yeah, awesome number go. six. Call uh call Bud Selig. Wait, he's not in charge anymore. All right. Um, here number five here. So you know the pitch clock is like is is here. It's probably going to stay. We want to um institute like a way to to sort of train uh people to this. You know, so that they come up into the league already being accustomed to pitch clocks. And the best way I. I've been looking around for like a way to do this. There was an article in the Tacoma Torch actually this week about uh, a little league innovation that is sort of similar to this um, that we think should be implemented. Eric, do you have the article? Are you, are you able to pull it up? Yeah. So um, hold on a second. Let me just get this article going he's, here. He's got. So check I, I I write sports. Sure. Sports. I write about, you know, satirical sports. But anyway, so I think that Little League should also adopt a pitch clock just to get them, you know, like like Mike said, just get them chipped. Ooh, did I it's just fine. reveal? It doesn't matter. Everybody oh, knows. man, big reveal today. Yeah. So I, uh, an article said uh, that I wrote says, Little League pitch clock gives kids only 15 seconds to take all advice shouted from parents in the stands. Yes. We want to implement this in the Little League. Do you think this is a good idea or a bad idea? Now, you know, I was against it until you mentioned the parents part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many times do you need to hear, bend your knees? Yeah. I mean, those Maybe. kids look frozen out there. They have to listen to like 27 parents yeah. yelling at them, and they have 15 seconds to decipher what the hell's going on and release that ball. Yeah. They got to know. I which, think it's good for Little League Baseball. Which abusive parent to listen to? It's hard to well, pick them out. My first thought was that that clock is going to just increase the number of times the players are crying. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I was I was kind of against it. But, yeah, the parent thing, that, that threw me in the other direction. And, and once they start crying, there's another mound visit. Yeah, right. That's what we <laughs> lost. Yeah, another, 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 another commercial. <laughs> That's right. It's another mound visit. But okay, the, awesome. The number, where, also, is that number six? Where are we? Yeah, well, well, that, was 15, five. The 15 that was five. The 15 rule also will apply – to, to overbearing dads. Um, now they only have 15 seconds to completely lose their shit. <laughs> storm onto the field, fight another grown man over a blown call. And yeah. The game, likely the store, the score isn't being kept. Yeah. And everybody gets a trophy at the end. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> less parents fighting with the ump because it's less time to do that. Yeah. 15 yeah. seconds to throw some blows. And well, you know, done. some of these overweight suburban parents, they're not making it out there in 15 seconds. By the time they get down the bleachers and all the way out, I'm just going to be like, oh, oh, time's up. Pitch. Let's go. <laughs> Play ball. All right. All right number six. Number six. Go ahead. All right. We call this one Lefty Lucy. Yeah. Lucy Everybody, like, like in Peanuts. Yeah. Lefties are are, are a very, um, what's the word? They're just treated. Gen genetically deficient. Yeah. That's one way to say it. <laughs> I, I was going to say, you know, treated unfairly. I'm a righty, so, you know, I'm, I'm not. But they can only play. Outfield, first base, and pitcher. That's pretty much That's it. pretty much That's it. it. That's all they do. Certainly can't catch. So we think if, if the goal is to have more runs, maybe more errors, more runners on base, every team needs to have one left-handed infielder, not including first base. Yeah. What do you think? A second baseman trying to turn left-handed second baseman. Left what, what do you think? 
I like it. It's good. Well, what, what, what is this? What, does this have an implication on batting? Uh, just more runs, mm. more errors. Well, no, I don't. Not for the the hitters can still hit from whatever oh, side. No, yeah, yeah. But you have to have you have to have one left handed playing infield, uh, like left handed yeah. person playing infield with the mitt on his right yeah. hand. Could be a catcher too. Right. That would also. I mean, it's there's a reason you can't be a left handed catcher. Yeah. How about this? Can I suggest a bit of a change? Yes. Whether whether the play whether the player is lefty or righty, they have to have the mitt on their right hand. Yeah, that's the oh, uh, yeah. You know, so they might they might kind of fudge it. You got? So are you saying you have to catch it with your right hand, switch over, and then throw it with your right hand too? Is that what you're you saying? Might. Whatever. When when the when the pitch is released, the mitt of the the glove has to be on their right hand, no matter what. Oh, I love no it. matter if they're yeah. lefty or. So okay. they could Jim Abbott it if they wanted to. The Jim Abbott rule. But you'd be at your better uh, position to just put a lefty in there and teach him to play infield. Yeah. That's assuming lefties yeah, yeah. can learn to play infield. Maybe we'll yeah. get some ambidextrous infielders. That's what I, I think that's where this is going. Yeah. It's a great rule. Okay. If we go that way, another awesome. Okay. Number seven. <clears throat> this one is called the tough shit rule. Uh, if you break a bat, no replacement. You get one wood bat per at bat. If it breaks, you can either try to hit with the handle <laughs> or you're out. It's brilliant. What do you think? We broke Dan. All right. So, so here's our thought process. Behind duct tape. It. Duct tape. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, okay. duct tape. You have eight seconds to duct tape. <laughs> I mean, all these guys are shaving their bats right. to be the most economical, aerodynamic, economical is not the right word, but efficient, these things. And they're so fragile now. You know, yeah. the, the thick handles are gone. They're now super thin, so they can get some weight on the barrel. These bats are breaking like crazy. Yeah, tough they shit. They are. Yeah, they are. You see a lot of broken bats. Yeah, yeah. So let's that that shave. How many times is a broken bat per game? Two or three? That shaves thirty seconds of walking in there. Got a pine tar your bat. Yeah, and the chance go, of Roger know. Clemens being able to kill somebody with it goes down <laughs> tremendously. He only did it that one time. Okay, right, I got to think about. It. I'm I'm putting that one under great, not awesome. I got to think about it. I may change my mind. Right. You know, later tonight. Number eight, we yes. have. The Price is Right Showcase Showdown. <laughs> I like the name of that already. Yeah. Whew. All right. I love this rule because the goal, I think, is to get more fans excited about staying at the ballpark. Not yeah. just going there, but staying through the ninth inning. Okay? Yes. So during warm-ups is the most boring part of the game. Would we all agree? Yes. Oh, most yeah. people get their beer. They go to the bathroom and all that. Now, what if... During the warm-up pitches, you're not just warming up, throwing to just the catcher. The, <laughs> the announcer calls a random player from the stands to take one at bat during the warm-up. Yes. So now that 55-year-old dude from the suburbs yeah. who's never played baseball before, who sits there and goes, yeah, I could do that. Now he's got to go do that. Yeah. And he gets to stand there and take swings during those warm-up pitches. And the, and then there's the people in the stand should have to heckle. Him. Oh, that's just mandatory like, heckling. That should be an American pastime. Is heckling? Yeah, a nobody. <laughs> they did it to Ted Williams. <laughs> Shit, you may as well do it to the random guy like taking swings. Would you? Okay. Would you watch that, Dan? Would you like? You want to? That would be the most exciting the part of the game. Yeah, fan that would fan. keep that would keep me uh, in the seat during the warm up warm ups to watch. And more so, people yes. come to the game because they might get called. You know, you it, you don't just go to like the Price is Right to watch it. You go thinking you might be the one. You've got to put them on the jumbotron. Definitely yeah, promise the jumbotron. Yeah, yeah. people I, do I would pay, to I would pay more money to go to a ticket if I had. A, and there's eight. This happens 18 times a game. Yeah, and maybe more with extra innings. So right. 18 fans get a shot to take a live at bat. Exhibition event. Well, and and like you know, at O's games, there's like less than ten thousand people at the game most oh, of the so time. I would, so like my chances are really <laughs> good of getting called. You might get six at bats a season. I might. I might get <laughs> you'll, like you'll get more bats than some of the pitchers. Yes, true. <laughs> right. It could even out the uh, you know the limited attendance. You can get more people. The more limited the attendance, the more people are going to want to show up. Yeah, I right. would go to the bathroom during the the regular inning and just yeah, watch, make sure I watch that part. Right. When the when the shitty at bats are you know it's like the bottom of the order You're like all right I'm going to get a beer I love it yeah okay um Dan can we take a break and then have you tell us about some design things yeah good with me 
Okay, here's what that's what we're going to do then. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk to Dan about all kinds of like extra stuff, and it's going to be cool. You're listening to Chip Chat on Beltway Radio and beyond. Still on the counter You know the money hit it all the time Keep on Grinding Keep on Grinding You know you stay on my mind I hope you're doing good, girl Hope your mama good, yeah You tell your pops take it You know that nigga stay on bullshit Crazy as hell my name, that's still, that's still, you know, I've been thinking, I've been wishing, that we can get back, back there and there, I'm talking four flags, two a days up here, hiding from your girlfriend, like we the only ones here. Yeah. You know that shit sound good, uh, sound good, like a drop to the hood, uh, sound good, sound good, sound good. All right, welcome back to the chat here on Broadway yeah, Radio and John. I'm your host, with me tonight is Eric. Okay, how did you Eric? How do the people, Eric? There you go. All right. So when we left off, we were talking to Dan Formosa, a uh, famous baseball uh, rules book writer guy. He doesn't write the actual rule book. He writes a book about the rule book that explains the rules to regular people. Is that that's a fair way to put it? Yep. OK, but he's also famous for some other stuff. He's a designer uh, and uh, engineer or whatever. He's a smart guy who knows how to build stuff. And uh, and he does these YouTube videos where uh, I watch them for hours where he tests kitchen gadgets and uh, tells you why they're either good or bad and how to redesign them. It's brilliant television or whatever they call this now. Uh, you should definitely go watch all of them. It's Epicurious that, that puts them on. Um, so go search. Uh, what's the official series? That, that There's a series title. The series is well equipped. There you go. And right. I think I may be the only one to host the series on uh, for Epicurious. I'm not sure of that, but I think I'm the only one to host. Site? It's, it's kind of, yeah, right. <laughs> it could be the same. Yes. Well equipped. Well equipped on OnlyFans. That's a different Dan Formosa. Um, <laughs> okay. So, but Dan uh, has brought with him a collection of things that he's noticed in the world that are designed poorly. Um, but they somehow aren't food gadget related and thus he can't put them on his YouTube channel. Is that, that's essentially how this works. Yeah. Last time I was here, Tez asked me, what's a good example of a horrible design? Yes. And I wasn't ready visually with any images and I think the images are going to help, but I do have a collection that I've had for quite some time and kept building called what idiot designed this. There you go. Oh my and God. A collection of photos. Seen. I feel <laughs> I, seen. I actually want to turn it into a reality series where I actually get a camera and a microphone and storm into the place to find the person who designed 
Do you need some annoying radio hosts to host it with you? Because, you know, I know a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to do it? Yeah, I'm in. I'm 100% in. in. Right. Like, so here's Moore the person. scenario. We find the guy. We find. I, I just assume it's a guy. We find the person who designed that airline seat. Yeah. And we smash into his office and said, what were you thinking? What the hell is wrong oh, with you? People have to use this. Have what you never I sat in a sofa? What, what, what is this thing? <laughs> Um, so yeah, like designer is, is like, what is wrong with you? You're an affront to our trade. All right. So <laughs> they're a menace to society. Yeah. Right. Certainly the airline seats are show us, uh, one of the, the first ones here, I guess Brian's just going to throw one up and, and we'll see, or he's yeah, got go in sequence this. because I, I, I number them. Oh, there is a sequence. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and the first, first one, if I come, okay. So this yep. is this is the one that actually started off my collection, and forty five mile hours uh, and forty five mile speed limit, um, and these are all over New Jersey. Why do I need to know what the speed limit used to be? Yeah, that's true. So I I think you're driving backwards because I see you, you see the the analog of this is also like the end school zone. So it's like this road is by designation say fifty five. Yeah. But then there's some small section of it that is 45 and they put the sign that says 45 and then they tell you when that zone has ended and you're back up to 55. But rather than just put the 55 sign yeah. there, they put the end. So you got to do math. Well, do states do well, that? When you well, actually, Maryland, does Maryland say you're now leaving Maryland? Yeah. And then, and then one inch later, blocking the sign of New Jersey, it says, <laughs> yeah. Welcome to New Jersey. Like, actually, that'd be a good prank. Put New Jersey sign. would 100% do that. Man, when Chris Christie was governor, he, <laughs> shutting down a bridge is nothing. You imagine putting yeah. signs all over everything that says Pennsylvania? He'd do that in a heartbeat. Well, you know, I got to tell you something, though, Chip. After, beyond this sign, the speed limit is 40 miles an hour. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> so it goes oh. down. It does not default to 55, which is even worse because you may think it does. This is terrible. So how many yeah. tickets slash accidents do you think this causes? I, I It's a waste of a piece of metal and ink or paint or whatever they make those signs. If it's I were a cop, I'd sit right between those two signs. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and I would just yeah. make, up make my quota for the year. Yeah, yeah. wait for them yeah, to yeah, speed yeah. up. Like you were going 40. I caught like, you. Like, it says go 40. No, no, no. It says end 45. Yeah. And you're supposed to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe we can borrow that sign um, <laughs> during the previous guy's administration. And then we could just be like end 45. And then it would be, you know, would have been helpful. So Where meta. was that sign then, Dan? Yeah, there used to be a sign on, on Route 80 going from New Jersey to Pennsylvania. And when it got to Pennsylvania, there was a big, big, big sign that says, Welcome to Pennsylvania. America starts here. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm saying, why why was I paying why, why was I paying taxes all these years? Because yeah. I was in New Jersey. <laughs> right. Wait a minute. It's like yeah. wait, you know, no wait. part of Pennsylvania touches the coast. Right. Yeah. Like, there's a whole New Jersey in the way. Yeah. I need I need that photo though. I never took the photo. That's pretty good. All right, Brian, show us the Two. next one. Okay. This one, I guess, is self-explanatory. <laughs> uh, some, somebody, yeah, yeah. Don't know what to say about this one. It's self-explanatory. All right. So for the people listening, we should read what it says. It's a, it's a construction road sign. It says, caution, water on road during rain, which, which seems self-evident, but okay. Dan, yeah. take away. Uh, well, first, I need to know what state this is in. Yeah, what state was that? This was in... Um, Please tell me Florida. Where did I take this? This was out in uh, out in the far reaches of New Jersey, I think. Oh. I was, actually, I said, uh, it's in north, northwest New Jersey somewhere. Northwest <laughs> Jersey. The part of New Jersey that's really in New York. I want to yeah. know who's that government employee who's like, guys, I got this idea, right? <laughs> People don't know it's wet when it's raining. We need to inform the people. So my yeah. guess about this is that this is a place where like uh, an ephemeral stream appears when it rains. Like there's, you know, running water across the road. That makes sense. And I'm going to guess that there is some code that requires the posting of this sign or something like it in those conditions. And that's why the sign exists because somebody not only made the sign, but then made a P an ordinance that required people to use this sign. 
<laughs> to explain that the road is wet when it's raining. Dan, what would you, how would you rewrite this sign? I would take it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's say the government gave you, I don't know, $80 million to make a sign about <laughs> wet conditions during rain. What would that sign say? Caution, puddle. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Rain causes puddles. Yeah, rain rain causes puddles. If you taught that in, in elementary school, you could avoid the need for the sign all the way around. Like, look, everybody, rain causes puddles. There's a whole Peppa Pig about that. All right. Um, let's see. What's what's the third one? Yeah, and those are muddy puddles, by the way. Oh, okay, this one, this one is in the ferry terminal going to New York, right? So okay. uh, I want you to read the bottom one first. I'll read the bottom one first. Okay. So on the sign it says all complaints regarding the accessibility of this facility to disabled persons may be reported to the city of New York by dialing 311. Yes. Okay. And That's then true. apparently in case anyone has vision difficulties <laughs> they wrote the same thing bigger right above it. <laughs> Doesn't help if they're blind. Just helps if they're impaired, I suppose. Yeah. The crowd is is gathering to read the lower sign. The people in the back. Yeah, let's sit tall. Have to, for the back, on, have to see it. It's like two. I have that. Yeah. That's a crazy. You one. know what it reminds me of? If you ever go through a drive-through at like Burger King or something, it'll say in words on the board, "Picture menu available." And if you think about the categories of people who might need a picture menu, one illiterate. This word isn't going to help them. Yeah. Two, not able to like process the the words and needing images of you know not having english for example also this is not going to help them this this declaration is as useless as possible there's yeah. also one in the drive through at the mcdonald's that says braille menus available which i'm hoping is for if you have a blind passenger <laughs> who needs that and you want to know that you can ask for it but the other possibility is terrifying. Yeah, yeah. If you have a blind passenger who you don't want to talk to, that would be. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> who you can't read the menu to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I will say there is no shortage to my collection. I'm just, I just, <laughs> you'll find, you'll find them all over. Yeah, and I love these. All right, well, let's see. What's the next one here, Brian? I can do this all day. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Okay, wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I know what happened here. Okay, I get it now. There, nobody wanted to clean a second wall. <laughs> so they didn't want people's like greasy hands rubbing all over that fresh white tile. Yeah. So they just blocked off and said, no, we only have to clean one wall. Maybe, maybe New York, wherever this is, New Jersey, some subway stop was like, we only have allocated so much resources for cleaning. We only have so much, Mr. Clean. We ran out of pine salt. Yeah. And it makes yeah. sense. This is like, this is smart. I, I give this. Okay, you're, you're liking that one? So, you, yeah, it's, it's a, a subway station on Canal Street, Manhattan. All right. Okay, so I think I know what happened there. The code dictated that the uh, rail, rail be anchored. Be like six feet apart. Yeah. No, that they have to be anchored oh, instead of just vertical, uh, not anchored. They had to have so many points of anchors or whatever, and that was how they got around it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bet that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on my architect hat. By the way, Dan, I'm an architect, so I love this stuff. Um, oh, great. Come back to that photo. I, I'm going to pretend to... Well, I'm going to try to get the real thing. The top step, the yellow step in the yep. corner, it meets at a 45 degree angle. It does. And by code, you cannot have a zero point on a landing into three by three square landing. So that might and also that be triangle the case. is illegal. So they boxed off the illegal three by three. That is on. that is a very, very so that's similar to what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah, that's probably right. I bet you're right. I bet I'm wrong. No, so, someone wasn't talking to someone. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Shocking. It never happens in bureaucracies. They, they could have made a nice planter for an underground subway. They could have. And put like Metro's got them. UV light. Metro has them. <laughs> They've got planters. There's just nothing in them. Just put like fake plants in there. Yeah. All right. Uh, what else we got, Brian? Oh. Oh, I, I know these oh, things. Oh, it's just COVID. I thought it was oh, a pregnancy man. test. Yeah. No, no, it's not it's pregnancy. Okay. It's okay. But it's, okay. It's all right. I already got three. I didn't need any more. This reminds me I need to get a vasectomy scheduled very soon. Yeah. All right, so what's uh, what are we looking at here, Dan? No, this is a COVID test, and uh, the line pointing to C means you do not have COVID. <laughs> you know, it, that is a—I never even thought about that. That is 
-hmm. Now, the CNC is standard medical terminology, but not for the general population. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, seriously, I, I design a lot of medical equipment and devices, and I go to places like East Harlem where COVID rates are high, and I, I meet with uh, low literacy right. population, and I meet with low health literacy population. And whether or not that C or T is standard practice, putting a C, an indicator that points to C, and nothing else. And I got to tell you, the instructions are terrible. The instructions oh, I'm sure. are terrible. But pointing to C on a COVID test that you're going to give to the entire population, it seems like they could have been a little more clear as to what's going on there. Right. When you when you get T, do people think you have tuberculosis? I mean, what, what, what happens on the T? Yeah. I think it's like common and test, right? Is that what the, the two lines? Yeah. Yeah. So, but how control, would anybody control? control right? Yeah, control. Yeah, control. Yeah. But like that, you're right. That's stupid. So either rename the, the deadly virus that has killed millions of people that you can obviously destroy with deworming medicine or something. Um, and or idiots. Um or like, you know, just fix the little test strips, right? Like print COVID, not COVID. How yes, that, be? that would be, that would be my choice. I mean, the type may be tiny, but at least it's, it's explanatory. I mean, yeah. The government's paying for these tests anyway. Not so, anymore because you know, they lost it. No, the, the funding dried up. All the oh. COVID emergency funding. Well, they got to reduce their letters now. <laughs> right. Well, and, and yeah, <laughs> fewer letters. So that's why they got the C and the T. That's all they had left. They used them all up. The C and the R and the T can't be next to each other. Nobody will use the test yeah. in Florida. That's hilarious. All right. Uh, do we have any any more, Brian? We got three more. All right. Give us the next one. I love this game. Okay. Oh. Now, this is my Volkswagen. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, I had to get a Volkswagen in between because I ordered literally ordered an electric Volkswagen more than one year ago. It hasn't shown up yet. Oh, my goodness. But, but you know, gas gauges have a arrow to tell you what side of the car you fill up the gas that's right. i learned about that like three years ago yeah, yeah. they've had them since like the 70s yeah I so in volkswagen they put that symbol for the gas tank exactly where you would start thinking i need gas let's pull into a gas station so where the where the indicator needle is covers up which side it is so if you don't know you're you're yeah. guessing you know i'm gonna have yeah. to disagree with you on this one i wait until that needle it's much it's, lower than that. <laughs> past red. Yeah. We're going Kramer I'm my, style. I'm in my reserve reserve tank. Yeah. Well, in any case, wife, my wife would look at this article and freak out uh, this picture and yeah. freak out. She'd be like, we need gas. We only have a quarter tank left. Yeah, we need she gas. Would definitely get gas here. Uh, well, in any case, yeah. you know, there are tens of thousands of people who work at Volkswagen. Somebody's job is to figure out where to put that little symbol. Right. Yeah. And is that the Best place they could. They could have put it right it next at, to at it. Six yeah. o'clock at six right. o'clock would be. Yeah. The best. It's right there. You just you just uh, plotted out episode one of your new show. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah there we go. Let's storm into VW. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. Wait a minute. We did that one time before. No storming with the Germans and all the things. And the, no, 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 no. Okay. It's, it's been done. January six. No. <laughs> Easy. Uh, okay, so that's have another... really an indication of why you should either get an electric or not a Volkswagen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which side is the charging port on the electric? How will you know? Will there be an indicator? Um, I actually know that, but I got I'm curious to see if there is one. Ah, an indicator. Also, do you know the thing about that the gas gauges are all meant to lie to you? Yes, <laughs> and they're so like, is so so is the temperature. Uh, conspiracy yeah it's no it's not it's not a conspiracy this is like an actual standard that's like required in all the cars that the gas gauge lies to you a little bit you always oh, have way always more, have than, more you, than you than you think you do yeah that's why my needle can get way down below right it's set to go the, there is a the way the gas tanks are shaped there's like a reserve sump yeah that's like a gallon or two that makes sense but the but the reader for the gauge is in the non-reserve sump so it's not accurately representing how much gas you have relative to how much space there is in the tank so it, yeah. it is a lie it is an yeah. Sim objective lie similar with the engine temperature did you ever notice yes. whether it's hot or cold or any time of season it's always in the middle right like yeah. the te engine temperature never changes 
Well, it depends on the t- kind of gauge you have because the gauge I have in my hot rod is like actual temperature is reading back, you know, and I can oh, yeah. fluctuate. But yeah, yes. and I've had old cars that do that too. But when yeah, it's yeah. soups in the middle, they just want to let you know it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Right. It's okay. <laughs> it's Your okay. heater will now put out heat. Sometimes yeah. hiding information from the public is a good thing. Yes. Yeah. When done for ethical reasons. Correct. Right. Not- recutting a riot video into like guys sightseeing that is not an okay thing to lie about tucker four peaceful minutes right four peaceful minutes <laughs> all right what you got brian okay this is clearly an elevator that is confused Whoa, three, about what order the floors go in three zero two yeah is that yeah. the 30th floor What's zero the- is always a mystery it's a split level. It, what? Okay. Um, I mean, I used to work in a building that didn't have a 13th floor. It had an L and a 1. That's oh, yeah. I Airlines think. do that, too. It's another photo I've got. It goes from 12 to 14, which makes me think the people in row 14 are clueless. Yes. <laughs> right. That's how that works. Like, 13 is still 13. Also, this isn't real, stupid people. Um, okay. So what are we looking at in this elevator? I don't know. Oh, you just my, don't... my wife took my wife took this for me. My wife okay. Natalia took this. She was in the elevator and said, "This is a picture for your collection." Yes, this is very weird. Look how yeah. much two is rubbed off. Versus yeah, I'm trying. I'm studying the two. Must be like, like the, who's the, pushing that? The ground floor, or, or the best thing in the building is on two. Zero is usually reserved for like. There's nothing good on three. Maybe, Nobody's going maybe there. on the ground or the first parking row. Yeah. In the garage, but, but how like would it be above? Above two. Maybe the parking is above two. Is that a weird thing? That would be weird. But I have seen buildings like that where there's like parking at ground level and then there's offices below grade. So that could be. Yeah. I don't know. They could let you that, know. That is always the good key. To know. We need to know whose office to go storming let's, into. Let's push that zero button in January. Yeah, let's see oh, what happens. Six. Oh, oh! I've Where? been to Ireland. I've seen the square potty. Oh, yeah, we've had. Yeah, that. I was just yeah. in Ireland in August. I I don't like it. No, it's numbing. Yeah, yeah. it's numbing. I feel like half of my butt <laughs> is in the right spot. And then it kind of half of it's not. And your legs like are getting this weird crease in them where it's not supposed to be in. I mean, our butts are round. Yeah, right. People yeah. are sort of round. I don't get it. Maybe Europeans are square butts. Is that I mean, a thing? I can see the outside being rectangular, but at least the inner part should be. A I've even seen some of these in like fancier buildings that we've had. Yeah. That, you know, like they're trying to look European. Yeah, what, they're not what, uncommon here. Yeah, they're not uncommon. It's just unexplainable. So do you think people in Europe like are just they poop differently or something? They have square butts. Yeah, they have square butt. SpongeBob square butt. Yeah, like the Canadians in South Park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be. And if it is, it's something I don't really want to know. <laughs> when you eat a lot of potatoes, that's what happens. Yeah, you right. You oh, kind of square off a little one. bit. Oh, Brian's got oh, one more. I love these. I can do this all day. Let's see. It better not be the Desmond Howard joke. Okay. Oh, I, I this was fantastic. I have seen this in the wild too. Oh, and, the and, arrow's pointing inward. Yeah. So it's supposed yeah. to be Union Jack. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tell me which way this car is turning. Right. <laughs> yeah. That is so weird. I think it's turning right, but it's letting you know from the left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you some take... people do it. Yeah. Around here, for you know, sure. Let, let's just be happy that someone is actually using a blinker. That's true. Because let's around here in Maryland, I don't think people know that little thing exists. Inside of their well, they know because it turns on their headlights, Yeah, which they only put on in their brights at your face. But but not when it rains. No, not when it rains because the road's dry. <laughs> unless you, <laughs> you have need a sign, sign. how oh, would you that's know? It. The sign lets people know it's wet, so then they know to turn their lights on. Yeah, but if it you all didn't know, now. if you don't have the sign, is the road really wet you had no no way to prove it yeah yeah well that mini cooper thing is um it's unbelievable (laughs) 
<laughs> this is an incredibly funny exercise in stupidity, I gotta say, and we're yeah. making it much stupider. This is fun. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And again, not- the collection is much larger. And you keep your eyes open. You will find these things everywhere. I have actually a collection of similar things like this too. My favorite one is in uh if you go look in the bathrooms at Nat Stadium, okay. Uh the the Sloan valves on the urinals where you where you flush, right? They're all piped out of the out of the wall and the shutoff valve that would shut off that set of pipe is behind one of the Sloan valves with an access panel. So you would have to take the Sloan valve apart with the water on to open the panel to then turn the water off. Oh my god. <laughs> and it's in all of them. Next time you're at a game, go look. You'll see it. That's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> I used to work for those guys. <laughs> they didn't ask me about how to the plumbing work. We're storm you. Yeah, no, it wasn't me. I was like, hey, guys, come on. And they're like, shut up, kid. We don't care what you think. Like, all right, wait till you got to turn the water off. <laughs> You're going to get wet. So let's see how far I get with my reality show concept. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, get right on that. I'll I'll call it. Well, Discovery is right here in uh, Silver Spring, Silver right? Silver Spring, yeah. yeah. We got, oh, no, they moved. Really they were here. Okay, well, we'll call them up and be like, look, if you can get a couple of sister wives and and Dan, we can do the whole show. Yeah, well, yeah I got Epicurious credibility now. Yeah, it's 90 day fiance who the hell designed this way. Yeah, come on. We need a good punny name, right? Like, we'll work on that. Like, what the hell? That's not that's, a pun, but it's that, short and that's sweet. Not that funny. It's pretty, I'm sorry. We need a better a better name than what the hell. Don't you nominally write a joke newspaper? That was a really bad example of what I do <laughs> for uh yeah. I, I apologize. <laughs> All right, go work on that. Uh Dan, it's a school night, so we, we don't want to keep you up too long. But where can everybody get the book and get the new updates and all of that kind of stuff? Amazon baseball field guide and look for the uh look for the version with the blue binder. Because the uh, it's that's the new edition. The fourth edition now has a blue binder, um, and it's out red in time like for opening day. Will we know? No, May second. May second. Okay, May 2nd. So we'll have yeah. to suffer through a couple of months or a month of baseball without the official yeah. explanation of the pizza box. Yeah, exactly. But um, you know, we were so delayed by trying to figure out what the rules were that um, we didn't quite make opening day. For the publishing day. It's not your fault. It's no, it's not my fault. Dragging their, no. dragging their feet's fault. Yeah, Which exactly. I, new rules. They're not allowed to drag their feet anymore. <laughs> but May 1st, there's, there's still, well, May 2nd, there's still plenty of uh, season left. There you go. Do you have a section in there about how the Orioles could be better than not terrible? Um, yeah. That would be a book into itself. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, no. There's so many topics it doesn't get into. You know, we tried to stick with the rules. Try to get Pete Angelos to sell the team. That's what we need to do. He's, that's that's an option. Yeah, he's one of the worst owners in sports, and I'm a Washington football team fan. So, <laughs> oh, they're piling up. All right, everybody go get Dan's books, uh, and where can they watch your uh, your cool videos on, on the YouTubes? Well, um, for the serious design stuff, it's danfamosa.com. That's pretty yeah. simple. And for... Uh, Epicurious, go to YouTube and type in Epicurious Design or Epicurious Dan Formosa, and um, they should show up. I think we're up to like 30-something episodes. We have more than 50 million views, which wow. blows my mind. Yeah. And, um, yeah, people are liking them. I'm uh, several of those views. I, I, I'm yeah. not kidding that I, I've watched every one of these videos. They're really like I good. said, this is like my anal retentiveness just like spilling out of me. I yeah. Love, I love this stuff. It's very exciting. So, so keep it simple, Epicurious Design, and uh, they should show up. There you go. And we'll send links. So we'll put it on our YouTube channel and all that stuff so that everybody can find it. Uh, oh, brilliant. Put it in the comments. It'll be down here in the comments. Okay, like, subscribe, smash the button. What are, I don't know why people say smash the button. It's like you only click it once, right? It doesn't matter if you click it a lot Don't of times. Smash. Yeah. Uh, all right. Dan, thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, we're going to take a break, and we'll come – no breaks. We're gonna well, we're gonna let you go, and then we're gonna do the Keep third going. half of the show because our producer wants to get the hell out of here. All right, thank you. So Thanks. great to meet you too, as a baseball guy and a designer as well. Thank you so much. This was awesome. It was a yeah, lot of great. Fun. Yeah, yeah. Same here, Eric. Um, see you guys next time.
Yep, cool. Sounds good. Thanks, Ian. Appreciate it. All right, let's get on to uh, this next segment. This is called States That Suck. Uh, there are a lot of states that suck these yeah, days. Yeah, but there's two main ones at the moment. One is Texas. Now, listen, Texas sucks for a lot of reasons, Dallas Cowboys being one of them. But in this case, it's because Texas hates women. Uh, Governor yes, Abbott do. did not stand up for women. He doesn't uh, stand up much. No, not for anybody. Can I do that joke? Yes, that's the whole joke here. He is a bad person, and thus it is an acceptable uh, joke. He signed into law these abortion bans that are incredibly punitive, and then with the overturning of Roe, are now the law of the land in the state of Texas. And every doctor in the country warned all of these Republican men who passed these laws, hey, there are reasons people get abortions that aren't because they're raging sluts. They might need them to save their lives mm -hmm. because they could die because pregnancy is dangerous. And all of the men legislators were like, what? Women are people? They have danger? How can they experience danger? They just get pregnant by Jesus and then something happens. We don't know. They don't know how it works. So they were like, pish posh, get out of here. Now we've got five women who are currently pregnant or one or or were pregnant um, who needed an abortion for a medical reason, including like terrible miscarriages uh, and, you know, fetuses that are that are either already dead or about to be dead, uh, who could not get the, the necessary life saving care and had to wait in one case until. She was septic. She had sepsis. She was gone septic. Her her blood was infected, and she was in the ICU for three days. She had to wait until she was at death's door for the doctors to legally be able to save her life. They had to wait for her to get worse, knowing full well that that was what was going to happen. Oh, my God. The other women who are in these sort of similar positions are facing – a life or death choice. Either they get the abortion and survive and they have other children that they need to care for in some cases, or they let the pregnancy that they're carrying now kill them. And that is the choice that Texas made on purpose. They had several opportunities to undo this. There are even a number of women in the state, Texas state legislature that voted for this who seem to rationalize these kind of things as God's will or some awful, heinous shit like that. People are dying as a result, and they chose that. And the party of life, as they claim to be, is directly responsible for these deaths. And I wonder what, with all these personhood laws and all this stuff, if I could tie Attorney General Ken Paxton to letting these women die as a result of enforcing his law, would he be charged with murder? He should be. Couldn't he be? That's a reasonable question now. Or women should identify as corporations. Then they can have all the abortions they want because exactly. then there'll be people. Then there'll be real people. Yeah. Uh, Texas, you knew this was coming. The women of Texas knew this was coming. I, I will grant that I think a lot of men, I mean, even like, you know, men who try to do their best and be up on things, have so little understanding of female anatomy that they oh, yeah. are unaware that some of these things happen. And because we have a society that likes to pretend that they don't happen, uh, they might never encounter that. And because we also have a society that doesn't want to teach anything valuable about anatomy in schools, there's no way for the, like, unless you went looking for this information, you wouldn't know. That's why you got all these, these men in government who say things like ectopic pregnancies can be safe or reimplanted when they will literally kill yeah. the, the person experiencing them. That's how that's happening. It's awful. This is what they wanted. This is what they wanted. Yeah. And, and I appreciate, you know, all these people that are doing all the right things and trying to fight these laws. But I'm like, 
do these Texas congressmen even care? I no. actually, I actually think that you know they they don't care that these women. Not only do they care that these women are almost dying, I think they're happy about it. They are. That's the point. I think they're just like for God's reasons, whatever they want to create in their head, they feel like these women are evil. This is this is what you call the the cruelty is the point. They they mean these things to be harmful. They have figured out how to be harmful and dress it up in the guise of some religiosity or whatever. This is directly harmful. People are dying as a result of this law and now you've got five of them who are brave enough who might some of the you know, some of these plaintiffs might actually be on death's door. They might not live to see this lawsuit go through. So sad. But because the way our system is set up is you have to be harmed before you can sue. And because we have a system that does not value the lives of women, we now have to let people die of preventable injury to try to get a law overturned that maybe in spite of all of that, mm -hmm. the Supreme Court could look at this when it eventually gets there and go, it's God's will that these women die as a result of this. Because Coney Barrett, because Beer Can Brett, because these other religious whack jobs are gonna say this is what God intended. God damn it. No, it's it's absolutely a hundred percent terrible. And you know, I will say this though. Let me give you a brighter moment in here. Let's so, hope. Thank you, buddy. A little brighter moment. So my wife decided, I'm you know, I'm 43. My wife said it's about that time. Yeah. To get the big V. Yeah. Snip snip. Yeah. Did you get it? Not yet. But I got three three kids. I'm done. So I went to make an appointment. Yeah. I'm a little personal here with my they give you a bag of peas. So it's a long wait. There's a long wait. Why? There's a lot of people in front I, of you. I asked. Yeah. And they said, it's popular surgery. Said, Since a lot of this stuff's going on in the, in the country, the, the number of vasectomies has shot up like 10. Absolutely. I, I'm not, I'm not shocked about that. Which is actually a good thing. It is probably, well, except say. we have a negative birth rate in this country. Well, that's true. That's not maybe, great. Maybe we need that. No. Depends on which state. Yeah, we need a negative birth rate in the right states. Well, we need people to move, but uh, <laughs> we either need uh, more immigration, which Joe Biden just absolutely crushed today in a yeah. weird policy flip, uh, or we need people to have more babies because the fact is the workforce uh, is True. not being replaced. True. So we we have a problem. It's a looming problem, but it's a big problem. And you can look at other countries that have had this exact problem. Yeah. yeah and see that they do not get out of it very well. Japan is the prime example, of course. You know, they've lost 20 years or something like that. And we, and we do this to ourselves. We create laws that tell people, we don't want you to have a baby. Yeah, we penalize them. And then we people. say, why aren't you having babies? Well, we, we make laws that make it hard to be a parent, make laws that make it hard to be a pregnant person. Yep. And then we also make laws that force you to have children that you can't manage oh and by the way we won't give you paid maternity or right. paternity leave right and we won't cover your health care or child care costs and we won't cover and we're going to call you a slut while you do it yeah so so why should we have kids or why you know people who can't afford to have kids why why do it purpose yeah i mean it's a great question i mean i i i personally wouldn't give back any of mine but i would give back some of my friends kids my wife and I chose to not like have kids. Sell them or something. Yeah. We're, we're that we're that couple that chose not to have kids. It's smart. You're and we're actually financially okay. Like, like it's not like you, you want to buy one of mine? It. Hell no. No. <laughs> They're pretty cute, but um I like we're to be not the, selling children on Yeah, this I like show. to be the fun uncle. I, yeah. I'll, I'll borrow your kids for an hour just right. to like if, if you need some time. Sugar them up. And then I'll be like, all right, I'll teach them some swear words. Yeah, yeah. Send them back to you. They might they teach you some. They could show. I bet they would. Yeah. I learned a lot from your kids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they. Speaking of which, Florida. Do, 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 do. Florida. Florida sucks even harder than Texas. Uh, Tallahassee, that's the capital of Florida. Most people from Florida do not know that. Um, there's a guy 
nominally a lawmaker there in the Capitol. His name is Senator Jason Brodeur. I'm guessing not related to uh, the goalie. At least his name starts with bro. Yeah, right? That's, bro, that's pretty Jason funny. Brodeur. Jason Bro. Senator Bro. Uh, what does he want to do, Eric? Uh, he wants to require that anybody who has a blog <laughs> would have to disclose who paid them and how much, along with other information, such as where the post is located online. And they would be fined $25 per, per day. day. The report is late. And up to a 2500 maximum fee for each report. He wants, he wants people who write about government officials in Florida to have to register to be on a list. If you might have the barest minimum of understanding of the First Amendment, but you would know right away that this is a terrible idea and is very, very Nazi. But also, like, how on God's green earth does he think he can enforce this? Would the Tacoma Torch survive? It might, well, my, that's the my question. My satire blog on politics. Yeah, Would it survive in Florida? No. But or they I'd have can't. to register. Well, just don't do it. What are they going to do? Well, you know, it's funny. These are the same people that want to. Like, come in, get us, Florida. We're here in Maryland. So they, Idiots. They don't want a national registry of guns, right? Right. But they want a national registry of. Bloggers. Key keyboards? Yes. Like, right. register your keyboard to the state. It's an AR QWERTY. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, you can have it in my cold, dead hands. Yeah. I, I mean, have a right to bear arms, and that's B E A R T. Right to bear arms, but you just can't spell it out. Right to bear blogs. Yeah. Oh, that's a good How one. How do you know? I mean, if the pen is mightier than the sword, they're both, both clearly a weapon. Exactly right to bear arms, Second doing. Amendment protection. There you I, go. I think they used that quote and said, you know, the pen is mightier than the sword. So therefore, yeah, that's register your, your pen. Second Amendment protects your pen. Why blogs and why not words? Because they don't know what that is. <laughs> like, for example, I go online and spout a bunch of nonsense versus getting a microphone and doing this. Yeah. Is this a blog? I think they would think that. I don't think they know the difference. They just. They got, they got flamed on Twitter, and then they're like, that's it! Abandon the blogs! You know, it's a good thing Chip Chat is not registered in Florida. Come get us, Florida. We're registered <laughs> in Virginia is the LLC, actually, if you want to come after us. <laughs> we don't respect your laws. We don't think you have laws. You can send all the, the meth gators you want. They are not going to survive in the cold of Northern Virginia. We're fine. Fucking Florida. All right. You hear the music? Uh, that means we've come to the end of the show. Wrap it up. Uh, so we want to say thank you to you, Eric, oh, of the Tacoma Torch. Thank you so uh, Thanks for hanging out. Thanks to Dan Formosa for being awesome and taking all of that time to talk with us. That was really cool. Uh, thanks to our radio partners, Google, Stitcher, iTunes, YouTube, Amazon. We are on YouTube now live on streaming tonight, oh. um, which it should be. The ACLU, you know, all those guys keep us out of trouble. Uh, thanks to NOTN for keeping us on for another week, we assume, although we haven't checked. Uh, thanks to our digital media meatball, Mr. Elam. Uh, thanks to our home on the interwebs, copaymedia.com. And thanks, as always, to our family here at Beltway Radio for making us sound as smooth as Lamar's contract negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> Gino's making more <laughs> Gino's making more than Lamar this year. That's hilarious. Okay, <laughs> Eric, where can everybody get you on the social medias and things? Everybody can go to www.tacomatorch. Now, that's a K, Tacoma, not a C. Right. C puts you in the wrong state. Yeah. Tacoma with a K, and then you'll know you're on the East Coast. That's right. Tacoma Torch. Twitter, at Tacoma Torch. Instagram, same thing. I think they're all at Tacoma Torch. There you go. You'll know it's got a chicken on it. Chicken on a, on a torch with a flame coming out of its head. Yeah, there you go. The flaming cock of Tacoma. Uh, all right. <laughs> and you can find... You can find me and the show on the Twitter at uh, Chip Chat RR. You can find us on Facebook or Instagram at Rip Chip Chat. And you can, of course, find us every Thursday night at 930 here on Beltway Radio and Beyond. I'm Chip. That's Eric. You've been listening to Chip Chat on Beltway Radio and Beyond. <laughs>